Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, permutation, section 7.2 in your pre-calc uh, 12 class. Permutations, permutations. Let me just simply start it off here. So basically, a permutation is arrangement of objects in a definite order, okay, in a definite order. And that is something that you're going to have to clarify pretty quick here, uh, what a definite order is. And basically, what I say, or what we often ask the question, is does order matter? Okay, and right now order matters for a permutation, which means that if you're going to arrange A, B, C, right, there is only one, there are, there's only one group of A, B, C, but if you want to talk about how many permutations there are, there are six permutations, right? Um, and each of those permutations uses the same letters, but in a different order. So order matters. These are all the same three letters, but they are six different permutations, all right? Now, so the number of permutations of n objects is n factorial. So if you want, say, three letters, that means that 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6, means you have 6 permutations. Okay? The number of permutations of n objects is n factorial. So if you want to know, um, say, for example, you have 6 students, or say you had a family of 4 lining up for uh, a picture in... Um, you got a family of four. How many different ways can they line up, right? Well, you got four choices for the first one, then three, and then two, and then one, which is four factorial. That gives you 24 different arrangements or 24 different permutations uh, in which the order they can stand in, okay? Now, we're going to look at a couple of things here. What about if we have repetition? So, uh, we'll be looking at some examples here pretty quick. But when I say repetition, for example, say if I had A, B, C, D. Now that would be 4 factorial. That gives me 24 possibilities, okay? What about if I had A, A, C, D? How many possible situations do I have there now? Well, you have 4, so that's still going to be 4 factorial, but there's 2 that are the same, right? So A, C, D and A, C, D will be the same. So I could flip these back and forth. So how many different possible arrangements are there of these two? Right? So uh, it's basically going to be half because some of them are going to be this order and half of them are going to be in the other order. So if we divide that by 2 factorial, it gives us 12. That's how many uh, possibilities we have now. We have half of them. Now say, yeah, so let's look at this. So the number of permutations of n objects, okay, where there are a objects alike and b objects alike and c objects alike is this. You n factorial over... Well, how many A objects do you have that are the same? How many B objects do you have that are the same? How many C objects do you have that are the same? Okay, let me just sort of make another example here. If I had, for example, A, B, C, D, E, right? No uh, difference here. It would be 5 factorial, which would be total. So that would be 120 possibilities. Now, if you had two A's and then C, D, E, right? Well, you're going to have those 120 choices, but these can be arranged either AA or AA. So you got to divide it by 2 factorial. You have them. That's 60 solutions. Now, what happens if I had AAADE, right? Well, it'd still be 5 factorial, right, because there's 5 of them. But then I guess the question would be how many different arrangements are there of these three, right? And these three have, we know that three letters or three things, three objects, uh, have three factorial permutations. So all of those three factorial permutations will be the same because AAA is the same as AAA is the same as AAA, right? So we have to reduce it by that factor. So you divide it by three factorial, okay? So this is the idea behind permutations with repetitions. And then let's say we got a different situation now. Let's say that we're going to have um, how can I look at this? Say you've got six people to choose from, but you only want two of them, right? So say you have a class of 20 people. Class of 20. Right? You have a class of 20. And you want to pick a president, a vice president, um, and, um, I don't know, a treasurer. 
out of that group of 20 kids. Okay, so how do you pick three kids out of 20? So if you if you number them up, you can see it get pretty complicated. It could be these three, it could be one, two, and four, it could be one, two, and five, it could be one, two, and six. So how many different permutations are there of three people from 20, right? Well, that's what we're going to do now. So the permutation of n objects taken r at a time. So um, of those 20 people, say, that would be your n, for example, 20 taken three at a time. That would be your r. Okay, so how many different combos of three can you get from 20 different things, right? And this is what we end up getting. So this is notation now. Permutations of nr, okay, becomes npr. This is something funky. You need to find that on your calculator. If not, you can always expand it to this, okay, where n is a total number of objects and r equals the number of objects used. Now, npr, ladies and gentlemen, you'll find it under, um, on your graphing calculators if you hit math and you scroll over to probability, PRB, and then you'll see NPR, you'll see NCR, and you'll see RAND uh, factorial. Two and four are what we're going to be using right now. Okay, so let's look at some examples. So let's start off with something that you all know. Your locker combos here have three numbers out of 39, 0 to 39. So that means 40 different numbers that you can choose, right? So how many different combinations are there? Well, you got 40 choices for this first one. You got 40 choices for the second one. And you got 40 choices for the third. So that would be 40 times 40 times 40, which is 64,000. Okay, so there's 64,000 locker combos that you guys have on your uh, locks okay now if you look at this NPR thing that we're talking about right you have 40 numbers that you're choosing from and you're choosing three of them so this is 40 p3 so what we do is you go 40 and then you get to that thing here and you go oops I did it wrong sorry uh, 40 and then you go over to here and it's uh, 2 so 40 p and we'll put a 3 here and look at that Oh, 59,280. Well, that's interesting. We've got pretty much the same answer. Now, there's a little bit of a difference there, okay? What they're probably thinking about is that we're not allowed to repeat, okay? So that would mean, uh, let's see how we can make that work. So if you're not allowed to repeat, that means you have 40 choices for the first one, 39 for the second, and then 38 for the third. So it would be 40 times 39 times 38. Boom, there you go. All right, so repetitions here. There are um, a few different factors. These questions are going to become a little uh, confusing for sure because it's going to be difficult maybe to interpret what, the, what it is that they're asking. Okay, so um, that's that question. Uh, president, VP, and treasurer from 25 students. Well, we just did this one. Uh, with 20 kids. So uh, if your N is 25 kids and you are choosing three of those kids, then your NPR will equal 25 P3. And if you wanted to do it um, algebraically, you can use your NPR is equal to N factorial over N minus R factorial, which would be 25 factorial over 25 minus 3 factorial which is 25 factorial over 22 factorial right which is 25 times 24 times 23 times 22 factorial all over 22 factorial which ends up being 25 24 23 which is kind of like our three stages right uh, you have uh, 25 people to choose from for the president, and then you have only 24 left for the vice president, and then only 23 left for the treasurer. So if we look at 25 times 24 times 23, boom, we get 13,800. If we go 25 uh, NPR and take three of those, so 25 NPR, you can end up with the same answer. Okay? Now, uh, how many different arrangements of the word banana? Well, that's kind of an odd question because it wouldn't necessarily spell a word if you said, but anyways, 
uh, how many different arrangements of the word banana. Well, you can see right away that you've got three A's. So whether that A's here, here, or here, doesn't matter. So you have three A's that can be rearranged in any way to maintain the word banana. So you're going to have to reduce it by that number, right? So first of all, one, two, three, four, five, six letters. I have six letters. Okay? And some of those will be repeated, right? But we're looking at six factorial. You're not taking any of them out. You're not looking at the possible three-letter words from banana, right? You're looking at how many to use them all. So it would simply be six factorial would be a rearrangement of all of them. And now you have to think about how many repetitions. Well, there's just one B, but there's three A's. So three factorial would be one of the reductions. There's two N's, so two factorial would be another reduction. And that takes away all those other um, ones where this N could be here or here, and those A's could be all replaced. So the, the permutations of the A's would be 3 factorial, and the permutations of the N would be 2 factorial. So we reduce it by those factors, okay? So whatever that is, um, you can rewrite this out. 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 all over 3 times 2 times 1, 2 times 1, that takes those, that reduces that to a 2, so it ends up being 60. 60 different arrangements of the letters in banana that would spell different words, right? Alrighty, let's have a look. Canucks have 20 players on their team, say, and 12 forwards, 6 defense, and 2 goalies. So how many different arrangements could they have, right? How many different arrangements could they have? Um, well, we have 20 people total, so 20 factorial, right? Divided by 12 factorial, 6 factorial, 2 factorial. That's how many different ways you can arrange these dudes uh, by forwards, defense, and goalies. Now another question might be, uh, how many different combinations can you make? How many like line combinations can you make, right? So you have to understand that you're taking one goalie, two defense, and three forward, right? One goalie, two defense, and three forwards. Now, I guess there's a bunch of different questions. So there's six people on the ice, right? Six people on the ice. So how many different arrangements of six people on the ice are there? Well, that would be out of 60 people, you choose six. Okay, but that means that a goalie can be playing forward, a forward can be playing defense, a defense can be playing goal. So what you've done is you've looked at all the possible situations, but not all of them are possible, right? So we've got to look at it a little bit differently as well. Uh, that will come up soon, but it's just something right now, food for thought, okay? Here we go. So eight boys, two girls to stand in a line for a picture. How the hell are we going to do that? Well, you got eight boys. And two girls, that means there's, there's 10 people, right? So uh, 10 people would be 10 factorial standing in a line. So 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6, boom, 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 all the way down. Uh, we have similar questions. Now look at this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if you have 8 boys and 2 girls to stand in a line, another type of question might be, well, what if the girls have to stand together? If the girls have to stand together, it means that there's got to be like a girl, girl, like that. Otherwise, uh, everywhere else is a boy. Everywhere else is a boy. Okay, so you can think of this as being uh, not 10 places, but nine places now, if you see what I'm saying, because this is one thing. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what you have now is nine factorial possible arrangements of these things. Then you have to think about as well, uh, is this the only combination for the two girls? Well, these two girls can also sit this way or stand this way. So that means that you have two other choices as well. And we're just going to call it two factorial, even though it's just two. All right. So this is how many choices you would have if they had to stand together. So that would be uh, nine uh, factorial times two. So that would give me... 70, 725,760 possible ways that these people can stand in a line, okay? Now, another type of question would be, what if these girls can't sit together? 
What if they can't sit together? Okay? Or stand together. Which means that you're looking not at this situation where they're standing together, but all other situations. Okay? We're going to be looking at that situation very shortly too. It's called the complement. It's the other part that we want. Okay? First of all, let's remember, let's find out what 10 factorial was because that was everybody arranged. That's not whether they're a girl or boy, boy, girl, or whether the girls are together or not. The way that these 10 people can be arranged in a row is 10 factorial. And that number, 10 factorial, um, is 300 and, or 30, 3,628,800. Okay? So 10 factorial is that much. That's how many ways all these people can stand in line. If you want the girls to sit together, this is the situation. Okay? Now, the other one is where if the girls aren't supposed to sit together. Okay? If this is all the ones where the girls stand or sit together, then every other possibility from all these, right, is where they don't stand together. So this is the complement where you actually take the larger one and you subtract seven two five seven six zero and you have two million nine hundred and three thousand possible situations where the girls aren't standing together okay now i've just took a bunch of equations and showed you different uh, questions that can be asked there are no ends to the types of questions that can be asked and they get very complicated Okay, I will have as much difficulty sometimes as you guys, so hopefully you can help me figure some of this stuff out, and there we go.